for this film, we're really trying to be true to our roots. It was great coming on this film and actually working at ILM and having a lot of the masters and the people that actually worked on the original film still around. Hold your fire, do not fire! But then we wanted to take the Velociraptors somewhere else for this film. Glenn McIntosh, our animation supervisor, started experimenting with motion capture for the dinosaurs, and we found that it actually gave us a very unique and different look that we hadn't actually seen in the other films. Good. Good. David Cohen from Variety here. Industrial Light and Magic is celebrating its 40th anniversary with the revival of two classic franchises, Star Wars and Jurassic Park. With Colin Trevorrow directing, Universal brought the park and some new dinosaurs to life. But this time, those dinosaurs were actually played by people, and as they say in the ads, the park is open. Yeah, so that was actually one of the other massive challenges on the show, which was the creation of Jurassic World. We had really good artwork, and you know, sort of my approach to this kind of thing is to take that artwork and then go and try to find a, a real location that we can actually film at and hopefully get the basis for this environment. So we started hunting for a lagoon that looked very similar to the Jurassic World Lagoon, and we couldn't find it. <laughs> so what we ended up doing was using Hanalei Bay on Kauai, which is actually just a half bay. And then on location, they actually built the main street. And anytime you see mountains around it, those are added as well, because the main street was actually built in New Orleans. And ultimately, we ended up coming up with a full live CG version of the whole park, because we saw it from so many different angles during the film. Fantastic. Let's talk about the design of the Indominus, because here you get to create a dinosaur from scratch, as the geneticists in the film have done. The Indominus was certainly a tricky one. It's sort of the main character, or at least the, you know, the main CG character of the film. And so that with any main character like that, the design process goes on for a long time. Colin's main thing that he asked for from the Indominus was that she have multiple weapons. He wanted her to be able to attack in different ways. So the Indominus attacks with her arms, she attacks with her tail, she runs 35 miles an hour. So these are all things that we have to take into account for in the design so that when we then go to do the animation, she can actually do those things. The T-Rex that we see in Jurassic World is supposed to be the same actual animal that we saw in the first Jurassic Park. That's right. I mean, that's actually probably one of my favorite characters in the film is the T-Rex. I love the moment where she comes out of her pen and comes out onto the main street and the big fight ensues. That's awesome. In our design process for this, we actually had to kind of age her and try to make her feel like still strong, but older. On Jurassic World, we actually did a whole new thing where we actually built a full skeleton for each dinosaur and then a full muscle system for each dinosaur, and then put the skin on top of that. What that gave us was a much more realistic look to the muscles moving and the skin sliding on our dinosaurs. The performance of the Velociraptors has also evolved in the, the years since we've last seen a Jurassic Park film. We actually employed motion capture technology and we cast four uh, people at ILM as the Raptors. So anytime we needed a uh, performance from Blue, we'd call the same person down and that person would do you know, the action for us. We had to have four raptors and they wanted to have unique characters to them, so by casting a particular person for each one, we were actually able to get the performances to be very consistent through the film. And one of the main things that, that we were getting from was a lot of like very nice fast twitches and, and uh, it gave the characters just a less of a keyframe feel to them. Let's talk about the Mosasaur. The Mosasaur is a, a real thing and it's massive. It's like 80 feet long or something like that. It was Colin trying to open up the world and really try to make it feel like this is a working theme park. And they have to have multiple exhibits and things for people to look at. And it's also our chance to do something new that wasn't in the previous films as well. I am still waiting for the explanation of how they found the DNA for that Mosasaur. Because I'm guessing they weren't bitten often by mosquitoes. <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe it, maybe it breached and got bit. I don't know. <laughs> We're just gonna let that go. It's, it's cool, we, we like it. Please share this video with your friends, click like, and let us know what you think in the comments. We love making these videos, and your shares, likes, and comments help us keep on making them. And if you have an idea for an Artisans episode, tell us in the comments, we'll see if we can do it.
Want to see more about visual effects? Click on the box on the left to see how Robert Zemeckis recreated 1970s New York and the World Trade Center towers for The Walk. The box on the right will take you to the award-winning effects of black sails. To never miss an Artisans, click on the subscribe button. That'll sign you up for the Variety Channel. There's a new Artisans video every week, so come back soon. Thanks for watching.